A portion of this video is sponsored by MailChimp. MacBooks aren't cheap, and if you bought one or you're planning to, you want it to last a long time. And the good thing is, they will if you follow the tips I'm going to share with you. Like this 2012 MacBook Air that is still running great 10 years later. Now some of these tips are simple, while others you've never even thought about that can make components last at least twice as long. But before that, thanks to MailChimp for sponsoring this portion of this video. MailChimp is the number one email marketing and automation platform, and they have over 12 million customers, which send more than half a billion emails each day. Yes, half a billion. They analyze data from billions of their emails to personalize recommendations to make it easy for you to improve your business revenue and engagement. I first heard of MailChimp when I started my photography business and I wanted to send emails from my mailing list and needed a service that works well. And MailChimp not only makes it easy with automation and their creative assistant, but will do way more things like help you build your mailing list. One thing that is super cool is their customer journey builder automations, which let you remind customers about stuff they left in their online shopping cart with abandoned cart emails, or send retargeting emails to remind them to come back for something they saw on your website. So go ahead and check out the rest of their many features and get started at MailChimp.com. Thank you to MailChimp for sponsoring that part of my video. And now back to my regular content. The first is simple, keep your machine safe. You would be surprised by how many Macs die each year from falling. So if you're taking it with you, use a bag or a sleeve. And if it has MagSafe, make sure to use that so that if the cable gets pulled, your laptop won't fall down. Now you can also get Apple Care Plus, which can now be purchased as a subscription without a time limit so that if it does get damaged, it will get repaired for much less money. Now, when you're cleaning your MacBook, don't use heavy cleaners or random wipes. Instead, use a super soft towel and don't press down hard especially on the screen. Now for tougher spots, you can use electronic wipes, which are safe for screens and they won't damage that really good anti-reflectivity coating that is on your screen. Talking about displays, did you know that they can and do wear out, which is why some older MacBooks have discoloration or burn-in even with an LCD display. Now our 2012 MacBook screen is excellent and a few ways that you can get yours to last just as long is to not keep it at full brightness all the time and keep the screen on. You can also just lower the brightness and use dark mode, which will help. But most importantly, you wanna make sure that you're using the screensaver that is built in and make sure that your Mac is set to turn the display off if you haven't used it in a while, which also saves battery, which we'll cover in just a bit. Now, one thing that damages components is extreme cold or heat so it is best to keep your Mac indoors and not to leave it out in the sun or in a car that can get really hot in the summer or cold in the winter. With that if you're pushing your machine hard it will heat up especially if you have a fanless model. Now they are designed to throttle down to prevent damage but there are a few things they could do to help. First off if yours has a fan make sure to periodically blow out the dust with an electronics approved cleaning duster because over time dust can build up and your Mac will run hotter and the fans will run louder. So you want to make sure to get that dust out. Second, if you're pushing your Mac hard and for a long time, like for example, when rendering, you want to make sure that you have it on a desk so those feet can raise it up a bit and not on a blanket or something else that will cover up the airflow and keep the heat in. Now, if you want to take it a step further, you can use a laptop cooler, which we have found that not only does it keep it cooler, but it also improves performance, especially for fanless Macs. Now, when you don't need maximum performance or you don't want your Mac to run hot, you can also enable low power mode. I made a full video about this in detail, but I've been using this very often lately and loving it because with Apple Silicon, MacBooks have really good performance even in low power mode, it's enough for most common tasks. When you have that enabled, your Mac will use less wattage, which keeps it running cooler. And if you have an M2 powered MacBook, they have really powerful efficiency cores. So most of the time it will use just those in low power mode. And that makes it run super cool and it saves battery life, which is really nice. Now, one of the first things that can go bad in a MacBook is the actual battery. So let's talk about how to make it last a long time. 
Now, right at the get-go, optimized battery charging should be enabled, and you wanna make sure it's turned on in the settings. Now, this makes it so the battery is optimized, it will not charge uh, too fast or stay too high if you're not using it, just plug it in and don't touch it. Kinda learns what you wanna do. Now, some people like to keep their Macs plugged in all the time. Now, a while ago, that was bad. Now, it is not as bad as it was because even though it could say 100%, it doesn't mean that it is actually actually stuck there. It will let it lower a little bit, charge back up, and it can even just pull power from the, the charging adapter, which is why I would say if you care about longevity, I would use a good quality one like the ones that Apple give you. With that, you still want to unplug it occasionally and let it drain down so the battery doesn't stay mostly charged for a very long time. Have it run down to 20% and then charge it back up and that will increase longevity as well. Now, when you are charging, it is better to plug it in and let it charge up in one session instead of constantly plugging it into charge and then you know charging a little bit and then unplugging it and then drains down, you plug it back in, you will have better longevity if it's in one session. Now, if you're not gonna use your MacBook for a long time, it is better to actually shut it down instead of just putting it to sleep. Now, Macs do a great job about not wasting too much power, but at some point it's gonna go down to zero and the battery is dead. And it's actually bad to have your battery be dead for a long time. So shut it down if you're gonna be leaving somewhere and not using it. And the same thing goes for keeping a battery at 100% for a long time, which is why Apple's optimized charging feature will wait for it to charge up to 100% until the time that you usually start to need it. And at that point, it'll just kind of hover at 80%. Now, if you don't let your battery go below 20% or above 80%, and with that you charge in one session, that can double the longevity of your battery or even more so. Now, unfortunately, Apple does not have a setting in optimized charging to limit it to 80%, but there is some code that you can use and some third-party applications that will cap it at 80%. So if you care about it lasting a very long time, for example, 10 years, that will definitely help. And if you wanna take it a step further, it is actually better to use a slow charger than a fast charger. Now, uh, Apple devices and MacBooks will automatically fast charge up to 50% and then they'll slow down because fast charging puts out more heat and then your battery will degrade faster, so that's already good. But if you use a slower charger in general, that will help even more. And most of the time, I actually use a 67 watt charger with my MacBook. So if you follow those charging tips, your battery will last a very long time, longer than you need your MacBook. Now, there are other components that do wear out, and the biggest one is the SSD. Now, SSDs and other drives, they're not rated to last forever. Uh, a lot of the SSDs on the base models, they're rated for 150 terabytes written or 300, and that means that once you write that much data, it's pretty much worn out and it could die on you. Now, once you upgrade from a 256 gig model to a 512, that will actually double the amount of data that you can write on there. So even if you don't need a 512 gigabyte SSD, having double the longevity of the SSD and uh, the amount of data you can write will basically double its lifespan. So that is great. And if you can afford it, I would say to upgrade to that. Now, along with that, RAM does matter. If you don't have enough RAM, for example, you have an eight gigabyte model, what ends up happening is if you have many applications open or even a lot of tabs, there'll be extra data that gets written to the SSD offloaded to maintain your performance. Now that is a good thing, but if you have eight gigs, that happens way more often than with the 16 gigabyte model. So if you can afford to upgrade to 16 gigs, that will also drastically reduce the amount of data that's written to your SSD, and that can also improve your performance. So that also really helps your long-term longevity. So don't skimp out to buy the base model if you want your MacBook to last, for example, 10 years. It will be uh, much better if you can spend a little bit more money, and with that, the performance and the capacity is also uh, increased, which will you know extend the amount of time that your machine runs at good performance, and that you want to use it. So there you guys go. If you have other tips, go ahead and put them down in the comment section below. Click that circle above to subscribe. Check out one of those great videos right over there. This is Max and I'll see you in the next one.